Hi ladies, today we're going to talk about redox reactions and we're going to take a look at redox reactions in both acidic and basic solutions and we're going to talk about how we balance um, the redox reactions, particularly um, using the half reaction method. All right, so the first thing that you want to do, so here are some steps, and I would definitely put these in your notes. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to write the two unbalanced half reactions. And um, if this sounds confusing, don't worry, we're going to get tons of practice on this in class. Um, so you write the two unbalanced half reactions, and then um, you can even do two separate columns. Okay, so you do oxidation half reaction, reduction half reaction, um, and then you do each of these steps for both columns, all right? So you balance all of the atoms that are not oxygen and hydrogen first. So say manganese was in the reaction, um, you want to do manganese first. So anything other than oxygen and hydrogen first. Step two, any oxygens that you have, um, you're going to balance those by adding H2O to the other side of the reaction. Okay, step uh, the next step is you're going to balance all hydrogens by adding H plus ions to the opposite side of the reaction. Okay, and then you want to um, do a total charge calculation on both sides of the reaction. Okay, and then you're going to add electrons to whatever side you need to add them to in order to balance that charge. Then you're going to cross multiply. Um, both sides, so both of the half, re half reactions to cancel electrons, and then you're going to add those two half reactions and cancel anything that is the same, exactly the same on both sides. Okay, so this will make a lot more sense once we do some examples. So go ahead, um, pause this recording if you need to, and write down those steps. So these are for acidic solutions. We're going to do something different well, not entirely different, but a little bit different for basic solutions. Okay, so a solid copper penny, we're going to do this example here, a solid copper penny is placed in a solution of nitric acid. Okay, so the first thing that we want to write out is we want to write out our um, equation. So we have copper and we're adding that to NO3. Okay, we don't worry, we will add the H pluses back in at the end. They're just not necessary for um, the overall half reaction method here. Okay, because hydrogen doesn't change. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to figure out what is being oxidized and what is being reduced. So let's do some oxidation number calculations here. All right, we have zero for copper here, and then we have a plus two for our copper on this side. All right, so what's happening to our copper? Our copper is getting oxidized, right? So this is our oxidation. And let's figure out what's happening to our nitrogen. All right, so we have six. We have negative six from our oxygen here, okay? And we have an overall of negative one charge. Right, so what does our nitrogen have to be on this side? Our nitrogen is a plus five. So let's go ahead and put that in. Okay, so we have plus five for nitrogen here. A little easier on this side, right? So nitrogen is going from a plus five. So since we have negative two for oxygen here, we know our nitrogen needs to be positive two. And take a look at that. And our nitrogen is getting reduced from a plus five to a plus two. Okay, so we're going to start with our oxidation here. It doesn't matter. You can start with your reduction. You can start with your oxidation. Um, doesn't matter. And like I said, um, if you're doing this in your notes, maybe you want to do this in two columns. So oxidation in one column, reduction in the other column. Okay, so oxidation, we said we have our copper going to Cu plus 2. So we have Cu and that is a solid, All right? And we're going from Cu to Cu plus two, All right? Our next step would be to balance our oxygens with H2O, right? And we don't have any oxygens in this half reaction, so we can just put an X there. 
Next would be to balance our hydrogens with H pluses, and we don't have that. Okay, so then our next step, what we want to do is we want to add in our electrons to balance. All right, so if we have a charge of zero on this side and a charge of plus two on this side, where do we need to add some negative charge to balance that out? We're going to have to add it to this, to, the, <laughs> to this side. So we have CUS. And then on this side, what we're going to do is we are going to add in two electrons. All right, and you just do it like this. All right, we'll save our last step for the end. Now what we want to do is we want to balance our reduction. So remember, we had our nitrogen. So we have our NO3 and our NO. All right, and where do we see? So our first step is to balance our oxygens by adding um, or, nit or sorry, our first step would have been to balance our nitrogens, but those are already balanced. So our next step would be to balance our oxygens by adding H2O. Since we have three O's on this side and one O on this side, we're going to need to add in two H2O's on that side. So let's write that out. So NO3. That's a really big minus sign there. NO plus H2O, and I should be writing in my states of matter, so, right, liquid, this guy's a gas, this guy is aqueous. All right, so our next step, right, is to balance our hydrogens. So in order to balance our hydrogens, oh, that was two, sorry, we needed two O's to add up to our three O's on this side. So in order to balance our hydrogens, we need to add um, H plus ions. And how many do we have on this side? We have two times two is four. So let's go ahead and write that in, four H plus plus NO3 minus yields our NO gas. plus H2O liquid okay these are both aqueous on this side and then um, our last step will be to take a look at our charges and figure out where we need to add some electrons so not only do we have plus one, we have four of those. So that's plus four and minus one, which gives us a plus three overall charge on this side. And then as you see, we don't have any charges on this side. So if we have plus three on this side and zero on this side, we need to add some electrons in over here to bring that overall charge down. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to add in our three electrons on this side. So I have four each plus. To take out my um, my pen tab to make this writing a little bit easier. Okay, so now that we have our, both of our half reactions balanced, okay. So here's our reduction half reaction, and here is our oxidation half reaction. What we need to do now, right, is we need to cross multiply um, or think of a least common multiple to get our electrons balanced. So here we have two electrons and here we have three electrons. So what we want to do is we want to multiply each equation by something to get those electrons to a least common multiple. And we know our least common multiple of two and three is six. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna take this equation here and I wanna multiply it by three. So that would give me three Cu, three Cu plus two plus six electrons. Okay, and now this guy, what we want to do is we want to multiply this one 
by 2, and that'll give me 8 h plus plus 2 NO3 minus plus 6 electrons gives me 2 NO plus 2 H2O liquid. All right, now what I need to do is I want to add my two half reactions. So let's give ourselves some space. So I'm going to bring this one down first since I can see it better. So I have 8 H plus plus 2 NO3 minus plus 6 electrons. And then I have 2 NO and 2 H2O. And let's go back up and see what we had up here. We had 3 Cu. So 3 Cu. Um, and then 3 Cu plus 2 plus 6 electrons. Okay, and then anything that looks exactly the same on both sides, what we want to do is we want to cancel those. Okay, and the only thing that remains exactly the same in this equation is our electrons. So we cancel those, and then we write out our equation. Could have picked a better color, I know. Okay, and that is our balanced redox reaction for this equation. Okay, so it does become a lot easier. Um, kind of the more practice that you do, these steps will just kind of stick in your head. I know that might sound a little... Um, hard to believe, but it is true. So um, let's take a look at what we have coming up next. All right, so here are some things that you're just going to want to remember. Okay, so some common reductions in acidic solution. So you have the nitrate ion going from NO3 to NO gas, so nit nitrogen monoxide gas, right, which happened here in this equation. So this is one that does happen often. It's a common reduction, okay? And what you will sort of be asked to recognize is some of these common um, compounds, right? This is a brown gas, right? That's one of those things you might wanna just start to recognize, right? Permanganate also gets reduced in acidic solution Okay, going from a plus 7 to a plus 2. Um, permanganate, that permanganate ion, something that another thing that you should kind of remember or learn to recognize is that permanganate is purple in solution. Okay, and then another common reduction is our um, dichromate, right? So if we want to do the calculation here, we have a plus 3. And then if you have 7 times negative 2, that's negative 14. Um, so this would have to be a total of plus 12 to add up to that negative 2. So we started with a plus 6 here. So this is going from plus 6 to plus 3. That is a common reduction. Um, also in acidic solution, right, the sulfate ion will get um, oxidized. So that sulfur is going from let's see, plus four to plus six. So that's a plus four to plus six. Oh, it was right there. Look at that. And I was doing the calculation in my head. So this is a common oxidation in acidic solution. 
Another common oxidation is the oxygen and hydrogen peroxide. So it's going from um, a negative one, which is very um, uncommon for oxygen, but when it's in peroxide, in hydrogen peroxide or in anything with peroxide, um, it does have a negative one oxidation number. So that sort of varies from its normal oxidation number of negative two. So this is another something to just put in your notes to kind of recognize and remember. Um, so some substances with lower, less positive oxidation states than usual. So when carbon, um, Carbon has a normal oxidation state. It's usually a plus four, but in the case of the, um, in this polyatomic ion here, it actually has a positive three. Okay. And then what if you had the choice of two species that could be oxidized in a reaction, right? So for instance, tin, right? is easily oxidized from plus two to plus four. Chlorine could also be oxidized from negative one to zero, right? When you have the choice between two substances, it will be the metal, okay? So both of these substances could be oxidized by something else that is a common oxidizing agent. Um, but when you are left with the choice, it will be the metal. So choose the metal over the non-metal. Okay, so these are th just some things to have in your notes. These are things to kind of recognize, um, and uh, they, you will see them kind of come up over and over and again in um, AP level questions. Okay, so let's do another example here, and this will pull in a couple of the examples that we just saw on the last, last slide. So an acidic solution, so we're going to do our acidic um, redox steps containing tin to chloride. So let's write that out. So acidic solution of, we have tin um, to chloride. So that would be SNCl2 and then potassium permanganate. All right, so in um, acidic solution, right? What's going to be um, oxidized and what is going to be reduced. So let's go back to what we saw on our last slide here. So we know that our reduction in acidic solution is going to be that permanganate ion going from MnO4 to Mn plus two. So let's write that down. So that is our um, reduction. Okay, and we'll, this time we'll do our two columns and hopefully I can write small enough to make it fit. So reduction, right? We have our MnO4 going to Mn plus two, and that's how we're going to balance it. And then our oxidation, right? As we learned on our last slide as well, when we're left to choose the substance that will be oxidized and we had this exact example here. We have Sn plus two. We're going to oxidize it to Sn plus four. Okay. And these should be pretty easy to balance. So let's go ahead and start with this guy. So the first step would be to balance our manganese um, atoms, but those are already balanced. So let's go ahead and I'm actually going to make my line a little thinner here so that I can try to fit it all. So we're going to, this time we're going to start with our oxygen since our manganese is already balanced. So I have four oxygens on this side and none on this side. So I'm going to have to add in four H2O. So Mn plus two plus four H2O. All right, so next step is going to be to balance our H's. So I have eight on this side. So that means I have to add some H pluses on this side. So MnO4 plus eight H plus. And then I have my Mn plus two 
plus 4H2O. And let's take a look at our charges because now we have to add in electrons to balance our charges. So I have plus 8 on this side, plus 2 on this side. So what I need to do is I need to add in 6 electrons over here to balance that. So MnO4 plus 8H plus plus 6 electrons gives me Mn plus 2 plus 4 H2O. All right, and then over here, pretty easy. I don't have any oxygens. I don't have any hydrogens. My tins are already balanced. So all I need to do is balance my electrons. So I have a plus 2 here and a plus 4 here, right? So I'm going to need to add some electrons on that side. So Sn plus 2, Sn plus 4, and I need two electrons. Okay. So I have my two balanced half reactions. Now what I need to do is I need to balance out my um, electrons by cross multiplying. So here I have six, here I have two, least common multiple is six. So I can actually leave that guy alone. And then what I need to do is I need to multiply this guy by three. So let's do that. I have three, 10. 3, 10, 4, 6 electrons. All right, so now I want to add. I'm going to make my line skinny again. And probably the easiest thing to do is to write this out underneath of this guy here. Okay, so I'm going to add. And I have 3, 10, 2. 3, 10, 4 and six electrons. Okay, I can cancel my electrons and what am I left with? I am left with, and I should be giving that guy a charge there. Okay, I am left with um, this guy. All right, and that is my balanced um, oxidation reduction reaction, okay, that goes with this. So a little bit of practice of everything. So some practice um, kind of writing out some formulas, some practice remembering things that are reduced in acidic solutions, some things that are oxidized um, because of that reduction, and then balancing the half reactions and kind of getting to our final um, balanced redox equation. So we will have some extra practice with this during class, so you can ask me questions. Um, and if you need anything answered, any questions or concerns in the meantime, feel free to send me an email. Thanks a lot.